Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here on a Sunday morning after a Champions League final. And before I start, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for making such a big event possible. And I would like to thank Hero in particular for giving me the opportunity to uh, talk to you for a, about half an hour or so about my experiences uh, as head of uh, research and development at the uh, Football Academy of uh, Athletic Bilbao. Uh, when I was there, I had four key ideas in mind. The first one was to create our own uh, long-term player development model. Second one was to implement individualized training within the framework of a team sport. The third one was to avoid injury uh, as much as possible because injury was the main problem keeping players out of training and, and um, not allowing players to accumulate the famous 10,000 hours of practice. And then uh, the fourth goal that I had was to uh, increase the intensity of training because we know that is one of the key aspects of performance in football. I have quite a bit of uh, ground to cover, so um, I'll go, I'll move quickly. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, high intensity training in team sports and why it is relevant. Uh, a little um, introduction to the yo, yo intermittent recovery test. I know everybody knows about it, but just in case somebody has been hibernating for the last 10 years, I will uh, go through it. Um, then I'll talk about the individualization of high intensity training, uh, fatigue resistance in high intensity intermittent sports short-term sprint and power training, um, age-related differences in team repeated, uh, repeated sprint ability, and finally, the physiological and performance effects of intense training. So in terms of high-intensity training in team sports, we know that uh, high-intensity activity is a crucial component of competition performance in uh, not only in football, but in most team sports, including basketball, rugby, hockey, and team handball. High intensity training has been shown to be an effective training strategy in team sports, and high intensity intermittent performance tests therefore have been developed and validated to assess match fitness in several team sports, and also to evaluate the effects of various training and nutritional interventions on fitness and performance. If, if we consider high intensity training to be important, we need to be able to measure it and we need to be able to assess the effects of those high intensity interventions. And as I said before, in the past few years, the yo-yo intermittent recovery test has been one of the tools that has uh, been most widely used uh, world, uh, the world over to assess this um, high intensity repeated intermittent exercise performance. As you know, the uh, the yo-yo intermittent recovery test is a shuttle test of 20 meters. Uh, there is a starting point, a turning point. You gotta get back in time. Uh, you have a beep here, a beep for turning, a beep to get back here, and then you have a five meter diagonal recovery jog. You always get 10 seconds to do, to do this uh, recovery jog. The shuttle gets faster and faster. And as you probably know, there are two levels. Level one has an initial speed of 10 kilometers an hour. That means 14.5 seconds to run two times 20 meters. And you get 10 seconds recovery. And then in level two, the initial speed is much higher, 13 kilometers an hour, which means 11 seconds to run back and forth between the markers. Why is this test uh, so interesting? Well, first of all, because we know it's a reproducible test. If we implement the test here and we implement the test within a few days, we are going to get a reproducibility in that test of an R about 0.98 and a coefficient of variation less than five. The test is also sensitive to changes in fitness of the players. Here you see a study by uh, the, uh, the group in Denmark indicating that the player's ability to perform in this test is low in the period after the vacation, after the holidays, then mid-preparation it goes up as the player's fitness goes up. At the start of the season it reaches the peak value and then the players are more or less able to maintain that same level throughout the year. And most important of all, the test seems to be valid to uh, assess the 
amount of high intensity activity that the players are able to perform during a match. Here you see a relationship between the performance in the yo-yo intermittent recovery test and the high intensity running during soccer matches uh, by the same players. And as you can see, there is a decent relationship between what the players are able to do during the test and what the players are able to do in terms of high intensity running during the match. Another way of evaluating this validity of the test is to compare the difference in performance between top class players and moderate class professional players, both in high intensity running during a match and also during the, uh, the test, the yo-yo intermittent recovery test. And as you can see, the difference, the percentage difference in performance during the match and the percentage difference in performance during the test is very similar which is another indicator of validity of this test. A couple years ago, we published a study in which we assessed the, uh, the fitness determinants of success in men's and women's football. And one of the things we saw was the, that the yo-yo intermittent recovery test was a variable that differentiated very well between senior professional men players and junior semi-professional players and the same thing in the case of females. First team, second team, the main difference between the top level professionals and the juniors, both in men and women, was in their ability to repeat high intensity efforts during, the, uh, during this test. So the ability to perform intermittent high intensity exercise for prolonged periods of time, as measured by the yo-yo intermittent recovery test, constitutes a discriminative variable in women's and men's football. The yo-yo intermittent recovery test has also been validated for other uh, ball sports like basketball, rugby league, Australian rules football, and something that is not really a sport but that is important in most of our sports, which is refereeing. Uh, we also adapted the yo-yo intermittent recovery test to water polo and that test is commercially available. It's called the water polo intermittent shuttle test. So most sports that uh, rely on a high intensity intermittent uh, activity pattern uh, can benefit from using this type of test. The second point of my talk would be the possibility of individualizing training or high intensity training within the framework of a team sport like football. And it all started in, uh, at, at the Academy of Athletic Bilbao. It all started for us with a, with a case study. Uh, we had a, a player right here who was considered to be a very promising player, a very interesting player for the future of the, of the club, who, according to the coach, uh, had diminished his physical performance, was not performing at the expected level, and he was having a lot of cramping problems during matches. We went to our um, uh, databases and we saw that there were no issues regarding injuries. Um, psychologists assessed his uh, psychological status. There were no problems there, no school problems. And the only thing we could find was that when we looked at his uh, aerobic power by looking at our database of testing over the years, this boy had gone backwards for a couple years in terms of aerobic power. So what we did was implement an individual aerobic power and maximal lactate production uh, program for him in which uh, he would be taken away from the group for half an hour on Tuesdays and Thursdays and he would do one-on-one -on -one training, uh, in this case with me personally. And after that half hour of uh, aerobic power training and maximal lactate production training, he would go back to the group and join the, the team for the rest of the training session. We used sessions that were based on scientific studies and sessions that are applied in reference training uh, centers. So what we did was measure his, um, his uh, running ability th by means of a progressive running test to determine his velocity at two millimoles and his velocity at four millimoles. And we also assessed his performance in the yo-yo intermittent recovery test. Then we designed a few sessions of 
aerobic power training, typical uh, workouts of four to six repetitions of four minutes at 80 to 90 percent of heart rate max. Initially on the uh, on the cycle ergometer, then on the tre on the uh, treadmill, and finally on the pitch. At the end of those sessions, we repeated the yo-yo intermittent recovery test. And then when we realized that there was still room for improvement, we designed some uh, maximal lactate production sessions consisting on three repetitions of 45 seconds of maximal running, maximal intensity. Uh, why did we consider that uh, aerobic power was a problem? Well, when we compared his values in the yo-yo intermittent recovery test with that, the values of the literature, we saw that the values of the Juventus players were here, Danish professionals were here, professional strikers were here, he was a striker, and even though he was only 16 years old, we considered that his yo-yo value was very low, in addition to his V2 and V4 values. After the first phase of uh, aerobic power training, we managed to improve his yo-yo intermittent recovery performance by 15.2%. And then after the maximum lactate production sessions, we managed to improve by another 17.1%. I'm not so naive to think that all the improvement is due to, the, to these particular training sessions. But what is clear is that these training sessions were effective in getting him back in shape. And that made him get more involved in all other training activities. The boy started um, scoring again, his cramping problems disappeared, and he was selected for the, uh, for the national team. So given the success of this uh, particular intervention, we decided to uh, implement this type of training for all our top groups of the academy. This include our second team, which plays in the uh, Spanish second B division, our third team playing in the third division, and then the under 18, under 17, and under 16. And what we did was a very practical approach. Our routinary testing included uh, a maximal speed test, and it also included the yo-yo intermittent recovery test. Based on those two tests, we determined what I call the maximal intermittent velocity, which is uh, obtained from the yo-yo intermittent recovery test, and what my colleagues in, uh, in Aspire call an aerobic reserve, which would be the difference in speed between the maximal aerobic velocity or intermittent velocity in this case, and maximal speed during uh, a 30 meter dash or whatever you implement in your testing. Sometimes it's 20 meters, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's 40. So based on those two values, we could set individual pace for each player, and we implemented the following program. We would do specific aerobic power training without the ball, and I emphasize that, because I don't think using the ball is the best way to train always. Sometimes you better leave the ball on the side and do some other type of work. That's my point of view. So once a week, we would do aerobic power training. On week one of a mesocycle, we would do four by four minutes at 90% of maximal intermittent velocity with a minute and a half recovery. On week two, we would do three times five minutes. And within those five, minutes, five minute blocks, we would do 10 seconds at maximal intermittent velocity plus 5% of the anaerobic reserve, and 10 seconds at 50% of maximal intermittent velocity with two minute recovery in between sets. And then on week three, we, we would do exactly the same thing, but instead of using the 5% of the anaerobic reserve, we would use 15% of the anaerobic reserve. After a couple of mesocycles like this, we would move on to use, instead of 5% and 15%, we would use 15% and 25%. 